Hi guys, it's Belle here and I'm here to do another episode of Finish Up Friday. Um, last year I did a few of these episodes. Uh, we mainly focused on an altered book that needed finishing up. But I thought we'd do something quite quick and small that's in my finishing box. Um, and yeah, we'll get on with that. So today we're going to be making some scrappy pads. As you can see, I'd already started making some scrappy paper pads and I haven't finished these up. And I also had um, like other little bits that I wanted to make some more. So we're gonna be making these scrappy pads. I love these pads because they are brilliant for using in your personal journaling, for putting in a journal. A lot of these are vintage and vellum and all sorts of random little bits that you might throw away. But when you just want that finishing touch, when you're just looking for something for like if you're making a small embellishment or an ephemera piece or you're writing in your personal journal and you just want to put a little decoration down these pages are so good you can make them with bits of digital paper that you have left over you can make them with plainer papers that are good for writing on or again just using the ones we're going to be making a lot more of today are these that are made with lots of vintage little book pages and bits although I do have one that I do want to make for a journal that I've got coming up and honestly I just grabbed a load of random scraps a lot of it are vintage papers papers that have been drawn on inked up random bits of vellum book pages you name it there's a bit of everything in there i think and it's all about just making them up so what we're going to do first is make a few more pads i'm going to get some paper clips because i need my this my little paper clip box i'm going to need a lot of paper clips and then i'm going to sew but you could glue or you could use um staples so we could do a little bit of each and it's up to you how decorative you want them. I just do a basic stitch so that I can add decoration to go with the journal if I need it. So you can tell on here this is this beautiful paper. What you can't tell, if you listen, this is actually flocked. It's actually slightly raised and flocked. And I had a load of these strips. These are going to be brilliant for making a few more um, of these journals. They're a really good size. Uh, where's my ruler? And I'll tell you the size. So they are about five centimetres. Where's my ruler that's got the inches? Um, and here we go for inches, which is about two inches. It's saying on here wide. I'm actually going to cut them in half. This one, as you can see, has already had something taken out of and it really doesn't matter. They, they can be whatever shape, uh, size that you want. Um... Again, I'm just going to fold it in half, then I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to do the same with this. So I just want to get these finished. I've got all these bits that are waiting. Um, I've got this little piece here, which is going to make a smaller one. I'm just going to cut off the edge there. That doesn't look straight, so let's see if it is. No, it's not. I don't know why that wasn't straight. So there's another little one we're going to make. And then this is going to be a slightly bigger one. It's a bigger piece of paper. So I might make this at three and a half inches, let's say. And that should do for now. We should get enough done and it should give you an idea. So I like to fold them over so that they've got just a little bit folded. And again, half an inch maybe. It's really up to you. It's like this one's a bit more than half an inch. And I'm just going to get my uh, bone folder if I can find it and burnish that edge. Same here. These are the flocked ones. Oh, they're just so pretty. Um, yeah, about half an inch, two thirds of an inch, however much. Whatever I think looks good. I'm not measuring it. You can see that. Um, yeah, they're scrappy pads, they don't have to be perfect. So, I'll bend it over. This one's actually even further across, doesn't bother me because they're a bit smaller anyway. 
And these ones, I like these ones to be a bit smaller because like if you look at the size of that, I like it to be a bit smaller. I hope you can see, I hope I haven't been off camera. And then this one can be bigger because it's a bigger pad. So, right, I don't even know if we're going to get around to this one. I don't know if I've got any papers big enough, but let's start with these. Uh, so I have some of this number paper. I'm trying to think what I want on the back first. It literally is just finding a load of paper. Like this is, um, if you can see if I hold that up, this is handmade kind of paper. So that goes perfectly. I'm just going to tear it. And a bit can go on one. And a bit can go on another one. And that's almost the perfect width, actually, which is really good. Uh, then I've got some of this sort of gold shimmer paper. You can see it's all torn. It's got stitch marks on it. It's been inked around. And you know what? None of that matters because it's going to be um, ripped and torn anyway on here. And it gives the paper, it gives it some um, character for you to use. Like I'm putting that bit with the holes from the stitching and the inking, I'm putting that down near the bottom because that just looks interesting. So I want that there. I know that should have been straighter, but it doesn't bother me. That there. So let's look at this one. This one's torn here, so it's not going to be as long. You see, I'm just using my ruler. Nothing has to be exact. If you're someone who likes things exact, go for it. I am just using up bits that I have that I don't want to throw away because they're interesting. Um, but they're also not going to be perfect. So, yeah, and that's going to go on there. I like different layers as well. So, yeah, I do like different layers to my pads. That would be really good in one of these bigger pads, actually. That would go really well in there. So let's tear it from the back. And again, I want that stitch look, although I might wear the thread, though that's a bit ripped, so I don't know, actually. Um... No, I'm going to go without the stitching bit. I can add that to one of these other ones because I can rip that bit off and I can have that in one of the other journals. Uh, not journals, scrappy pads. So that will go like so. Um, so you see, they're quite quick and easy. Um, I've just got a load of random scraps here as well that can go in there. I've got some painted paper here. And I was wondering, that might go really well in this smaller one. So I think I'm going to do that. Again, it's just some weird inked paper. Um, I know a lot of people would call this kind of stuff like collage fodder. And it is really, it's collage fodder, but it's all in a scrappy pad. So you you just have it to hand. And I like to keep one in a little pot when I'm working on ephemera pieces. And then um, it's nearby. I've got some of this great uh, tea dyed vellum. So I'm definitely going to use some of that. Um, yeah, I like to keep it nearby. And then I just pull at the pieces as I'm creating. Uh, we've got some uh, book page in a foreign language. So you can see it's all torn there. I'm just going to rip down the side to kind of at least give it part of a straight side. And then I'm going to add it to one of these pads. Again, they don't all have to be the same um, width. That's the word I'm going for. I've got some Edith Holden book page here. It is very ripped. So I'm going to sort of rip it at a nicer, so that it looks a bit nicer ripped, if that makes sense says the word July on it and then I'm just going to rip it like that and then that will go 
in there too. We haven't got any for this one yet. Let's put it in there, shall we? So yeah, you can see how easy these, quick and easy these come together. I've got some vintage um, recipe book here. I'm trying to work out, it might be a bit big for that. So let's just add it to here. Um, I've got some ledger paper here. I think I want to divide this between two, make the most of it. So I've got this fun bit here, which will go really nicely here actually. And then I've got this bit with all the writing on it, which I'm going to put over into this one. And yeah, I'm just layering up super, super quick, not thinking too much of it. Again, some more vintage recipe book page. Let's add that over here. These are just fun little bits and pieces. Um, oh, I've got some, where did I just see it? I've got some fun music paper there. It's not that big, but you know what? It will work in here. Or do I want it that way? Let's trim it a little bit at the top because these are fun dots. And again, it's vintage piano roll actually. So that'll go in there like that. It's just making them look interesting. Here's another Edith Holden bits. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna rip it. And yeah, it's just making them look interesting and giving you bits to work with. Uh, that's already got Edith Holden. So let's put the number actually, because number's always good to use in journals, over onto this one. Over there. Uh, we've got lots of bits of vellum here, so I can add a bit more vellum to one of them. Let's add some vellum to this one. I've actually got some um, like of this kind of vellum that's got like clocks and things on. So let's add that to one of them. We haven't got anything with this long one yet. So let's add a piece of this fun vellum up here. Uh, I've got some, I do believe this is Gail Gustinelli printable that I've used in bits. I'm just taking off the white edge. Hope you can see that. Um, and then, yeah, I'm going to rip it and I will add it to one of my scrappy pads because it's a digital I've got. It's a bit ripped. I don't know what I'm going to use it with. So let's add it to a scrappy pad because it's fun. It's interesting to look at. Um, so let's put it in here. So you can see it's just lots and lots of little bits and pieces. I've got this vintage um, letter. It's just an edge. You'd usually throw that away, but it goes so well in um, like in a journal on a piece of ephemera. Like wh why throw it away when you can use it in some way, you know? That's what I think anyway. We've got some of this uh, foreign language page. Oh gosh, that's all moving. So let's just rip a bit of that down and then let's rip across the bottom because it's all a bit ripped anyway. And I'm going to add it to this one like so. Got music, but it can't, can't be a pad of mine or something like that without music. <laughs> So I'm just going to rip this bit and I'm going to put it in this larger pad and I'm going to put it upside down because it doesn't matter because I'm going to rip it out anyway. So that doesn't matter. So like that. And then I've got this piece left, so I might as well add that. So I'm just going to add that to one of these. So you see how easily these come together. You can use up so many fun bits and pieces. I have some more of this fun kind of music vellum. This is so pretty. I'm going to use it on this one. This one definitely needs a bit more. Um, let's have a look. Oh, I've got some brown paper. I love using brown paper. Uh, it just, it has a nice kind of texture to it and it has a nice sound. So I'm going to add that to this pad. And then if I rip it down the middle in half, I can add a bit to there and I can add a bit to here. 
just like that. Um, oh, another little strip of Edith Holden. Again, you might throw that away, but why would you? It's got leaves on it. It's vintage. It's Edith Holden. I'm going to put it down on there for one of those. And then use this green one maybe on here. Already got some Edith Holden there. Let's add some more. Oh, I've got this fun. It's the uh, tea stained edge of some paper. I love it. That is this is so much fun to use on ephemera pieces it really is um, so that's definitely going on quite a few um, doesn't matter if it's a bit ripped and torn it adds or I think it adds I don't know you add what you like the look of to your scrappy pads um, I like these kind of things so it doesn't bother me I've uh, got some more brown paper there so I might just add that under there like so and let's have a look. I've just, I'm just going through everything. I've got some of this fun paper. It's packaging, but you know what? That looks, works so well on ephemera pieces. So I'm also going to add some of that because it's just so much fun to use and it gives the pad a different texture. Um, yeah, just add it to things, guys. I always think if you think you'll like it on a piece of ephemera, if you think that it's fun to look at or whatever, then add it to your scrappy pad because someone else might like to use it. That's the way I look at things. Um, I've got some of this book page as well that I've also used alcohol inks on. It's a Shakespeare page. That'll probably go really well in there. So I'm just going to guesstimate where to tear it as it was um i'm going to turn it that way around and put it here so yeah you can make them all different sizes you can add all sorts of random things to it that's going to work so well now in this one um yeah you can add all sorts of different things i've got again some hand dyed paper um, that was obviously playing with inks and things with and again I'm just going to add that where do I want this one maybe here that will go really nicely there so I'd say this is almost done now this one it's got lots of fun bits and pieces hasn't got any vellum I don't think it does so I'm going to add like a little bit of this vellum to it I'm going to rip along that bottom and I'm going to add that vellum like here because it just adds and then the numbers showing and I think that one's basically done now unless I see something else I quickly want to add to it so I'm just going to paper clip it before I stitch it together I think this one's basically done as well I'm just I just like to tap it to get everything into that crease then move it around make sure that it looks you know that I like the look of it another thing that I like to usually put in one of these scrappy pads or on it is just a little bit of doily it's decorative and again it comes in useful when you're um, making ephemera pieces in your journal so I'm just going to add that as well as this and yeah look how quick those came together guys um I've got this fun piece as well. Look at these. These are like dyed and they've got shimmer on them and all sorts. They'll go great. Actually, they might go better up. So that'll go like that one. And then I'm going to have this one on here too. Just add it. Yep, so much kind of fun bits and bobs and actually we've got a piece that might go really well on there so I'm gonna just trim the edge so it's a bit straighter and then that can go on here and then we have this random piece left and why waste it that's what I say I'm gonna put it on there why waste it uh, we've got some numbers always like numbers this is vintage book page as well. So I'm going to add that to this one because it doesn't seem to have as many kind of book pages like that. 
again just tapping it trying to get it all kind of straight and looking um, aesthetically pleasing as possible I've actually got a bit out of um, this is actually out of a book that goes really well that go well here actually go really nicely on this one like so look how quickly these are coming together um, I think I need a bit more vellum on something oh even this this is off an envelope it says please recycle after using me I will I will recycle after using you by putting you in a scrappy pad um, book page vintage book page that's going to go there I want to actually be able to see the please recycle me after using me because I like it and then this book page is going in this one. I think this one's basically almost done. We've got some more doily. It's a different one. I'm going to put it that way. And then that scrappy pad is done too. And then we're going to stitch them. I feel like I want some doily on this one maybe or something. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I've got some more of this. This one, this piece can go on here. We've already got one, but there's no harm in adding another one, is there? So, you know, again, it's my scrappy pad. I can add, I've got some um, digital there. Now I really need, oh, and some numbers. Now I'm just like, oh, look at this. Oh, look at this piece. <laughs> look at this piece and this piece. Um, add that on there like that now I really need some uh, doily if I can find some and maybe some more vellum vellum on that one I like putting vellum on top because it kind of dulls down whatever's underneath a little bit so if you've got a brighter piece of digital or something it kind of dulls that down and just gives it a nice look and I'm looking for the rest of the doily that I know that I have oh got this fun piece as well oh oh okay that can go on here actually um where is the rest of that doily ah oh, here's a piece so I want this on this one maybe or this one this one I think and then we're going to stitch them now I only have black thread in my machine so guess what that's what I'm going to use is the black thread in my machine and even if I wanted to change it out for white it's not what I've got I'm not like messing about too much I was just wondering there's a piece of map here that I'm thinking would go really nice on that one actually um, and another piece of this fun vellum which I think is Tim Holtz vellum so I'm just going to add that underneath to underneath the other piece of vellum um, and I think that one's done so I'm going to stitch these I'm just going to get my sewing machine set up and then we'll stitch them okay hi so I kind of um, I stitched them all through and just put them all through at the same time I don't need to double triple whatever stitch because these are scrap pads and the whole point of them is to be to have bits of paper pulled out as long as everything is tight in there like I don't think that one's tight in there I didn't grab that bit so there you go but everything else is as long as that's all tight in there like that is what matters let's make sure um because obviously you don't want bits just randomly falling out until you want to use them so let's do that and that and again when it comes to putting them in journals you could decorate the tops of them you can add a label you can put fabric on them so this is a basic this is a piece of doily that I found that was dyed by a very good friend of mine like she made them ages ago and I've been hoarding them but I've only got a few scraps left so this is a plain one that would work really well as a pad this is also a great way to use up scraps of scrapbook paper like strips of it this is obviously a paper and um, digital scrap pad there 
but again really good to put in journals this is one of the ones we made today i've just done a simple zigzag stitch it's got all sorts of fun bits and literally all you do is rip a bit out use it for a piece of ephemera use it for a piece of journaling that's why you want to add lots of fun types of papers that are inked or vintage or um dyed or textured or um vellums and things like that that's why you want to add bits like that like even this bit of doily would work so well in a small piece of ephemera in a journal or bits like this you know these ones that are plain papers are great for writing on and putting in the journal for notes these little scrappy pads in specifically i make to make sure that and even then the once you've used it all even the paper the scrapbook paper itself like this one has so many vintage book pages and map and um edith holden and um it's got this fun Tim Holtz vellum, if you can see that, it's got music paper, more of that vintage piano roll paper. It may be mainly plain, but it's vintage, it's got that P on it, it might just give you that background for a piece of ephemera. This is one that we made today. And even this piece, so much fun to use. Brown paper, lots of vellum and hand dyed um, vintage letters i just think if you've got scraps and they're vintage i hate wasting them um so that's why i like making these scrappy pads or even that recycle art use i just like it i just think it looks fun they'll work particularly well in junk journals because there are lots of little bits but honestly i often just put these in my journals so i like having a selection of them to pop in my journals so that is this week's Finish Up Friday. I managed to put together a few of the pads that have been sitting to wait and stitch them all, which is what the other ones we've made. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think three of those were already put together and waiting to be stitched. So Finish Up Friday, scrappy pads, great way to use up vintage scraps and other things. Great way to add some interest into your journals. Great thing to just pop on your desk and you're thinking, oh, I'm making ephemera. And you might have other bits and pieces, but you might just need that one little piece. And you might think, oh, that stitch piece looks fun. Let's add that for the texture. Um, so, yeah, it's collage fodder as well. But instead of keeping it all in a big drawer, you can put collage fodder in scrap little scrappy pads and keep it a bit neater and challenge yourself. Just pull out one pad and make a load of ephemera using only the bits with that one pad, you know, as background collage fodder. So anyway, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this Finish Up Friday. Um, I have a few more that will be coming soon and we may be finishing up another journal that I've got, uh, which will probably take a couple of Finish Up Fridays, but I know you guys kind of enjoy that as well. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'm not saying I created this. I'm sure plenty of people have made these. I just like to think of them as vintage book page and vintage paper, collage fodder, scrappy pads. Um, it's just my take on them and I just thought I'd finish them up, see as they were in my box. Um, so anyway, thank you so much for watching. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're having lots of crafty fun and I will be back again soon. Bye for now, guys.